Hey y'all, so as I was browsing Reddit this week, I saw a post on our game dev that posed the question, is it possible to create games as a hobby after work? There are a ton of great answers in this thread, as well as just great positivity from people who have actually completed games built entirely in their free time outside a full-time job. So I'll be sure to link that down in the description so you can check it out. Of course, this question resonates strongly with me because this is the lifestyle I have been living and showing on this channel as I've worked on my various games for the past six or seven years, however long this channel has been a thing. When I read this, I thought it could be a fun opportunity for me to share how I have been making this work for me for such a long period of time, kind of walking through my daily routine and how I fit game dev into it and some of the other responsibilities I have to juggle that inform the decisions I make around how I spend my time. So we will do just that. It is Sunday evening right now, and tomorrow I have a pretty run-of-the-mill Monday. We'll work on Dauphin, hit a workout, spend at least eight hours working from home as a software engineer, and on top of that, try to keep a year-and-a-half-old puppy alive and happy enough so that he doesn't try to destroy me or our home throughout the course of the day. But yeah, let's do it. And in fact, let's start right now because an important part of my morning is the few minutes of prep I do the night before. If you've seen my video on how to become a morning person from a few years ago, this step should not be a surprise, but that is to lay out my clothes the night before. Basically, when I wake up very early tomorrow, I don't want to have to make a single decision first thing. So I'm going to have my clothes laid out, in fact, in the bathroom, ready to go for me in the morning so that I can just hop out of bed and get dressed. The same is actually also true for the development work that I'm gonna be doing first thing in the morning as well. You can see I've got my Notion board laid out here with all the stuff that is on my plate. And if I did not know what I was gonna be working on tomorrow, I basically have no reason to get up out of bed. So it's a crucial thing to know the night before. As far as what I'm actually doing tonight, it's gonna to be a lot of nothing. My wife has been out of town this weekend and tomorrow as well, in fact. So I pretty much worked on Dauphin for at least six hours today which feels like enough for a Sunday. So I'm gonna take it easy tonight and we'll get after it first thing tomorrow morning. Good morning, y'all. I'm joining you just a few minutes after 5.45 down here in my kitchen on Monday morning, and this is when the day starts. The first real part of my morning routine here is actually game dev. I find that I'm most productive in these early dark morning hours while everyone's still asleep. So that's what we're gonna do. After I brush my teeth, I always swing down here to fill up and drink at least a half liter of water and start brewing some coffee. This first cup of coffee while I'm working on Dauphin is always just really enjoyable and it helps charge me up for my workout that we'll get to here in a bit. As a bonus, while coffee is brewing, I will always try to do some brief mobility work. As someone who sits at a desk all day, my hip flexors always need some stretching. With coffee in hand, I have returned back upstairs here to hopefully knock out at least one small development task for Dauphin. I recently wrapped up the foundations of base building within Dauphin, and at this point I need a way for the player to actually accrue materials with which they can build items for their base or campsite. To do that, we need to embark on the player's foraging skill, allowing them to collect those materials from their environment. So let's get started. All right, y'all, as is often the case, time has flown by this morning. I made some progress on some artwork, not a ton in the code, but that's how it goes sometimes. It is 6.45 now, and that leaves me about 45 minutes to go lift before Moose will definitely be awake and ready for his walk. So let's go do it. This is always one of my favorite parts of the day because I honestly just love working out in this home gym that we've put together. It's one of the first things we did when we bought this house. It's a big investment, but the convenience of being able to get a great workout in from home is just totally worth it in my opinion. So we've got adjustable bench, squat rack with a bunch of bumper plates, adjustable dumbbells, and some accessory stuff. That's really all I need to have an awesome workout and make strength progress. So it's just awesome. I love having this thing. And to go along with that, on all but the coldest days, I have the garage door open. So it's pretty much like working out outside. Awesome for a beautiful, cool morning like today. All right, workout is done. It is 7.30 on the dot. Time to go wake up the pooch and he's gonna have two things on his mind, a walk and playtime.
So we've romped around outside. Moose has just finished up his breakfast and it's going on 8.20 here, which is just about the right time for me to head up and take a shower and get ready for the workday. As I mentioned, I work from home, so I'll probably just go ahead and grab my laptop and bring it downstairs and work on some breakfast here to follow up my workout. That might seem like it was a bit of a hectic morning, and it probably was, but that's really how each of my days start. The only exception is that when Kate's home, she and I alternate doing every other morning with Moose. So for me, that time would be reclaimed either working on Dauphin or just having some chill time before work. Mercifully, at a year and a half old, Moose seems to have made it to the stage where he finally sleeps through nearly all of the workday. So I'm gonna take advantage of that, shut down the camera for now, and we will catch up around 5 p.m. where I will unwind for a bit and hopefully pick up where I left off this morning on Dauphin's foraging system. Hey y'all, welcome back. It is now 6.30, a bit later than I expected to catch up with y'all this evening, but that's just how it goes. I had a big plan laid out for a nice walk through the woods, bringing y'all along with me with Moose after work, which did happen, but it was super gross outside because it's been raining all day and Moose was in a state. So the focus changed from videography to survival very quickly. The good news is that we did survive. We came home and played and both ate dinner and are now in a much better mood. So we have the whole night ahead of us. This evening is actually a little different for me. Normally Kate and I will go on a walk together with the dog right after work and then just cook dinner and hang out as a family until eight or nine o'clock, at which point I will sometimes work on Dauphin, but if we're being honest, more often than not, I just kind of chill out, meaning that in many cases, the morning is my only development session. Tonight, I need to go pick up Kate from the airport, but not for another two and a half hours or so, so I have a larger than usual window of opportunity to work a bit more on Dauphin. I think the play tonight is to do pretty much the same thing I did on Sunday. Take advantage of this opportunity to make more progress, but not squeeze every last minute of productivity out of this window. Instead, I'll work for a little bit and relax for a little bit to keep my head fresh for the morning. All right, y'all, catching back up at eight o'clock here. After a nice little development session, I'm happy to say I was able to make some good progress and hit a good stopping point for the evening. I think the best way I can show you is just with a little demo from my game here. And previously, when the player swung an ax from their bar down here at a tree, nothing happens. Similar to when you hit the tree with the pickaxe, nothing happens. After tonight's development session, when you hit the tree with the hand axe, we'll see the tree kind of quickly shake and drop an item for the player to collect. In fact, if we hit this total of three times, we should see an even larger kind of collection of items drop as we've exhausted the tree's resources. Just to start, obviously today, I need to create some more appropriate items for a tree to drop than a scrap of pre-processed paper. And I think once you actually use up all the tree's resources, it would be a good idea to destroy the tree, maybe even drop a seed so the player can plant one elsewhere. That can all wait for another day though as I start to wrap my evening up here. I have about an hour and a half before I'm off to the airport, so plenty of time to kick back and reflect on another productive day. Hey everyone, I'm joining you all the following day here. I'm happy to report everyone traveled safe and made it home in one piece last night, and I figured we'd kind of wrap up the video here with some parting thoughts on how to make hobbyist game dev work with a full-time job. I probably have a whole video's worth of thoughts on this topic, but I don't wanna keep you all that long, so I'll leave you with maybe my most important approach to building what I consider a balanced routine like what you saw yesterday. I know I've preached this before, but I really think in order to sustain the practice of developing games for months or years at a time, you have to shift focus away from your goals to your identity. And I'll use myself as an example here. I'm currently working on a game with just massive scope because I really want to, and although I do have a goal to complete it and sell it, that's not what drives my daily practice of game development. Instead, I make daily decisions based on my desired identity as a game developer, and more specifically, a game developer with good physical and mental health and healthy relationships. That identity is what informs decisions like cutting out game dev time for workouts in the morning and making sure I give myself time to unwind in the evenings and on weekends. Now, is this the most efficient way to build video games? Probably not. If I built video games for my livelihood, would I need to change something? That seems likely. But for my responsibilities, my situation, and my desired identity, this approach works great for me. Hope y'all enjoyed this video. It was a fun one to make. Of course, the devlogs will keep coming, but do let me know if you wanna see more kind of routine and habit-focused content like this. It is a big part of what I do, so I enjoy making it. 
As always, I'll wrap up with a shout out to the folks who support this channel and Dolphin's development on Patreon. Grammy supporters are Kyle Van Riper, Jess Sargo, Samuel SVD, and Mega Ombre, and our beta supporter going strong as always, Cody Odin. Keep your eyes peeled for the next devlog and I will see y'all very soon.